Hey there, fellow soil enthusiasts. If you've ever wondered why some gardens absolutely thrive while others struggle despite our best efforts, I'm about to share something that completely changed how I look at my garden beds. There's a dark secret hiding beneath our feet, literally dark, and it's the key to unlocking soil fertility that most gardeners never truly understand. I'm talking about humus, and no, I don't mean the delicious chickpea spread, though both are amazing in their own ways. This mysterious black gold is quietly working magic in your garden, transforming dead organic matter into the foundation of life itself. After years of studying soil science and getting my hands dirty in countless gardens, I've discovered that understanding humus formation is like having a superpower in the gardening world. Picture this. You're walking through an old growth forest and you notice that rich, dark layer beneath the fallen leaves. That's humus in action, my friends. It's the final product of organic matter decomposition, a complex, stable substance that's been broken down so thoroughly by soil organisms that it becomes something entirely new. Unlike fresh compost or decomposing leaves, humus has undergone complete transformation. It's no longer recognizable as its original organic material. Instead, it's become a dark, spongy substance that holds onto nutrients like a molecular treasure chest and creates the perfect environment for plant roots to thrive. Here's what blew my mind when I first learned this. Humus can hold up to 20 times its weight in water. Imagine what that means for your plants during those scorching summer days. But you know, it's not just about water retention. Humus acts like a slow-release fertilizer, gradually feeding your plants exactly what they need when they need it. Now let's talk about the incredible team that creates this black gold for us. Humus formation isn't just about throwing organic matter on the ground and waiting, it's actually an intricate dance involving billions of microorganisms, each playing their crucial role in this underground symphony. The process starts with the obvious players bacteria and fungi. These microscopic workers are the first responders when organic matter hits the soil. They break down the easy stuff first, simple sugars, starches, and proteins. But honestly, they're just getting the party started. Next come the more specialized decomposers. Actinomycetes, those thread-like bacteria that give healthy soil its distinctive earthy smell, tackle tougher materials like cellulose and lignin. These compounds are the structural backbone of plant material and breaking them down requires some serious biological machinery. But here's where it gets really fascinating. As these organisms work, they're not just breaking things down, they're building something new. Their waste products, cellular remains, and the complex molecules they create during decomposition become the building blocks of humus. It's like nature's ultimate recycling program, where nothing is ever truly waste. Understanding how organic matter transforms into humus has revolutionized how I manage my garden's organic inputs. The process happens in three distinct stages, and knowing these stages helps you optimize conditions for maximum humus formation. The first stage is the rapid decomposition phase. Fresh organic matter, think kitchen scraps, fallen leaves, or freshly cut grass, gets attacked by bacteria and fungi within hours of hitting the soil. During this phase, you'll see obvious changes. Materials shrink, temperatures might rise slightly, and the original structure starts breaking down. This stage is fast and obvious, but it's just the beginning. Stage 2 is where things get interesting. The remaining organic matter, now partially decomposed, becomes food for a more diverse community of soil organisms. Earthworms join the party, along with springtails, mites, and countless other soil dwellers. They're not just eating, they're mixing, grinding, and processing the organic matter through their digestive systems, creating something entirely new in the process. The final stage is the true transformation. The complex organic compounds that remain get bound together with clay particles and minerals through a process that's still not fully understood by scientists. This creates humus clay complexes that are incredibly stable and can persist in soil for decades or even centuries. Here's where your gardening skills really matter. 
While humus formation is natural, you can absolutely influence the speed and quality of the process by creating optimal conditions in your garden beds. Moisture is critical, but it's all about balance. Too dry, and the microorganisms shut down, too wet, and you create anaerobic conditions that slow everything to a crawl and can produce unpleasant odors. I've found that soil should feel like a wrung-out sponge moist but not soggy. During dry spells, I make sure to keep my compost areas and heavily mulched beds consistently moist. Temperature plays a huge role too. The microorganisms responsible for humus formation are most active when soil temperatures are between 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. This is why decomposition slows dramatically in winter, and why hot composting techniques can accelerate the process. In my garden I've noticed that areas with good sun exposure but some protection from extreme heat produce the best humus over time. Oxygen availability is another crucial factor. While some decomposition can happen anaerobically, humus formation really thrives with adequate air circulation. This is why I'm always advocating for avoiding soil compaction and why I regularly add coarse organic matter that creates air pockets in the soil. One thing that surprised me early in my gardening journey was discovering how much pH affects humus formation. Most of the beneficial microorganisms involved in creating humus prefer slightly acidic to neutral conditions, with a pH range of 6.0 to 7.5 being ideal. In acidic soils, decomposition slows significantly, and you end up with more partially decomposed organic matter rather than true humus. In highly alkaline soils, some organic compounds become chemically bound in ways that make them less available to plants. I always recommend testing your soil pH and adjusting it gradually if needed to optimize humus formation. The carbon to nitrogen ratio of your organic inputs also matters tremendously. Materials high in carbon like dried leaves, paper, or woody prunings decompose slowly and help build soil structure but they need nitrogen to fuel the decomposition process. Green materials such as fresh grass clippings, kitchen scraps, or fresh plant trimmings provide that nitrogen but can create anaerobic conditions if used alone. I've found that maintaining roughly a 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio in my organic inputs gives the best results. This might sound complicated, but it's actually pretty intuitive once you get the hang of it. Mix your browns, which are carbon, with your greens, which are nitrogen, and let the soil organisms do their magic. Now let's get practical. Based on everything I've learned about humus formation, here are the strategies I use to maximize this black gold in my own gardens. First, I never let my soil go bare. Bare soil is a missed opportunity for humus formation. I use living mulches, cover crops, and organic mulches to constantly feed the soil food web. Each time plant roots die and decompose, they contribute to humus formation right in the root zone where plants need it most. I also diversify my organic inputs. Different materials break down at different rates and contribute different compounds to the final humus product. I use everything from kitchen scraps to fallen leaves, grass clippings to woody prunings, always keeping that carbon-nitrogen balance in mind. One technique that's worked incredibly well for me is creating humus hotspots throughout my garden. These are areas where I concentrate organic matter and create optimal conditions for decomposition. Over time, these spots become incredibly fertile, and I can transplant this rich soil to other areas or use it as a foundation for new garden beds. Understanding humus formation has completely transformed how I garden, and I know it will do the same for you. This isn't just academic knowledge, it's practical wisdom that will make your plants healthier, your soil more resilient, and your gardening more successful. The dark secret of fertile soil isn't really a secret at all, it's been happening under our feet all along. By working with these natural processes instead of against them, we can build soil that sustains abundant plant life for generations to come. Remember, creating humus-rich soil is a marathon, not a sprint. It takes time, patience, and consistent effort, but the results? healthier plants, better water retention, improved soil structure, and reduced need for external inputs. Make it absolutely worth the investment. Ready to unlock the full potential of your soil? 
Start implementing these humus building strategies today and watch your garden transform into the thriving ecosystem it was meant to be. Don't forget to subscribe to Soil Sensei for more deep dive gardening insights and share this article with your fellow garden enthusiasts. Because every gardener deserves to know the dark secret of fertile soil.